Hello, I'm Jared Taylor with American Renaissance. You may have heard the slogan, abolish the white race. It was popularized in the 1990s by an academic by the name of Noel Ignatieff. His motto was, treason to whiteness is loyalty to humanity. This kind of thinking is getting popular on college campuses, and it's even beginning to seep out into the real world, along with other fashionable ideas like white privilege and the notion that there's no such thing as race. I've made a serious effort to understand this stuff because, as they say, ideas have consequences. First, though, when people talk about abolishing the white race, they say they're not talking about exterminating white people. But how do you abolish the white race without abolishing white people? This is possible only if you believe that race is not a biological fact, but simply a way of thinking, a social construct, as they put it. You abolish the social construct, not the people. Well, okay, how does that work? Take a look at these people. They are Swedish soccer players, by the way. Now, take a look at these people. They are Nigerian soccer players. You probably see white people and black people, and to you, they look like different races. Well, you're wrong. A racist society has trained you to see white people and black people rather than just people. Historian Nell Painter explains that, and I quote, race is an idea, not a fact. She also says, what we can see depends heavily on what our culture has trained us to look for. Now, people like Professor Painter admit that there are physical differences between these people, for example, and these people. But they would say the differences are superficial and completely meaningless. Therefore, the white race does not exist as a physical fact, but only as an idea. It's all in your mind. If we could blot out the idea of the white race, then because it exists only as an idea, the white race will disappear. People who look like me will still be around, but we won't think of ourselves as white, so we won't be white. Now, I know this sounds confusing, but this is the liberal view of race. Race is an illusion. It's a social construct. Now, for the human groups we call races to be just an idea, we must assume that all these groups are basically interchangeable. This group, for example, is just as likely to produce a Tchaikovsky as any other. And this group is just as capable as any other of creating a high civilization. You might wonder why some groups haven't created high civilization. The theory is that these people, whites, either stole their culture or colonized them and exploited them and kept them from developing a civilization. And that is why we have to abolish the white race. Nobody talks about abolishing anyone else. You see, white people invented this phony concept of race and for just one reason, to draw false distinctions between groups and to justify oppressing and exploiting everyone else. Adam Kotzko, who has a PhD from Chicago Theological Seminary, he explains that whiteness is, quote, a racial identity that exists solely to legitimate the subordination and exploitation of other races. Now, if white people hadn't come up with the idea of race, presumably no one else would have. The Chinese, for example, would have met people like this or like this, and they would have thought to themselves, aha, people, we're all just the same. It's only white people who got it wrong. And of course, this explains slavery, colonialism, racism. Whites built a worldview with themselves at the top and everyone else at the bottom. This white supremacist structure continues to this day and explains essentially all forms of inequality. Of course, Muslims have had slaves, including white people, ever since Muhammad's time. You still find slavery today, practiced by Arabs who take black slaves. The Mongols invaded and slaughtered their neighbors. The Japanese had colonies. In East Africa, the Tutsi and the Hutu slaughtered nearly a million of each other with machetes. But these races don't have to be abolished, just ours. And so, 
although all races are supposed to be equal, you begin to wonder if there isn't something unequal about whites, that maybe we are supposed to have unique moral flaws. Tamara K. Knopper, who teaches at University of Pennsylvania, puts it this way, whiteness is a structure of domination. As such, there is nothing redeemable or reformable about whiteness. Sounds like it's just got to go. And all this is related to white privilege, which works like this. When whites invented the idea of race with their own group up at the top, we gave ourselves a huge advantage. We are all in the top group. Noel Ignatieff, whom we met earlier, explains, and I quote, the privileges of whiteness extend to the lowest members of the white race who enjoy a status higher in certain respects than that of the most exalted persons excluded from it. This means a white Skid Row bum has a higher status than Barack Obama or Oprah Winfrey because he's white. He enjoys the fruits of white supremacy. Okay, so how do white people stop being white? Well, first, they have to give up white privilege. But how do you do that? How does a Skid Row bum renounce his privilege? Or Donald Trump, for that matter. What are they actually supposed to do about the fact that they're white? Well, one thing white people can do is become so-called white allies of people of color, or POC, as they are now known. As the Black Lives Matter activist Chanel Helm explained just last year, White people can give their houses away to POC. If they get an inheritance, they can give that to POC. They can cut back on their expenses and give what they've saved to POC. Tamara Knopper has instructions for white allies. She says this, they must be committed to either picking up arms for other people, that's for POC, and only firing when the people tell them to, dying for other people, or just getting out of the way. I'm warning you though, POC are not going to be thankful for any of this. A black guy named Hari Ziad edits a site called Racebaiter. He wrote an article called Why I'll Never Thank White Allies, in which he says this, black people, you don't have to be grateful for anything white people do. You don't have to be grateful for their money, their apologies, their acknowledgments, their praise. You deserve all of it and far, far more. And there's a lady of color named Romina Dramisino, and she wrote an article called Dear White Women of Color Who Are Told to Be Nicer to White Allies. She writes that when whites act as allies, some people say, and I quote, you need to be less angry, less bitter, that hate isn't the answer. Fuck that. In other words, just because white people are trying to be nice to POC is no reason to be nice to them. And here, by the way, is the illustration for her article on why not to be nice to white allies. You see, POC are losing patience with us white people. Year after year, we keep basking in privilege and oppressing them. ta Coates is probably the most prominent black writer in America today. As he explains, I would like to tell you that a day approaches when the people who believe themselves to be white renounce this demon religion, he's talking about white supremacy, and begin to think of themselves as human. But I can see no real promise of such a day. Last November, a Hispanic named Rudy Martinez, a senior at Texas State University, wrote an article about white people for the school paper. It was called, Your DNA is an Abomination. He wants to abolish the white race. And he wrote, White death will mean liberation for all. And in the meantime, he's stuck with us. And he says, remember this, I hate you because you shouldn't exist. Assad Hader is an up and coming writer of Middle Eastern origins. And he writes this, difficult as it is for people of color, including me, to come to terms with, we are not about to get rid of white people. This country is full of them. They are an intrinsically reactionary force. The relevant question is how to subdue this force. Well, some people have answers. Adam Kotzko, writing in the name of white people, he says this, 
we should commit mass suicide. Well, that would certainly abolish the white race. Although, as far as I can tell, Professor Kotzko has not yet set the example. Miguel Felician, a student at the University of West Georgia, is all for white suicide. He's a member of a prominent debate team. And during a debate at Harvard, he said, white life is wrong. We should never affirm white life. When his white debate opponent asked if whites should then just commit suicide, he said, do it. Affirm your suicide. It's one little step in the right direction. Well, clearly, if whiteness is such a bad thing, whenever whites think of themselves as whites, it should only be to hang their heads in shame. There can be no positive white identity. As I pointed out in my last video, it's not okay to be white. The idea is that we have no legitimate interests as a group, and the world would be better if we just faded away. But this deep antipathy for whites is just an idea, right? Well, not for some people. Last August, Frederick Scott was arrested in Kansas City for killing five random white men. He hunted them down and shot them over a nine-month period. He had said he wanted to, quote, kill all white people. Last April, Kori Ali Muhammad set out to kill as many white people as possible in Fresno, California, and he managed to kill three of them. Last September, Jacob Watson of Louisiana was arrested after he told people that he planned to kill all white people. Last November, this guy, Michael Arrega, traveled from Dallas to Washington, where he planned to kill all the white police at the White House. He was nabbed before he could shoot anyone, though. Now, this all happened just last year, but I bet you never heard of any of these people. You may have heard of Micah Johnson, who killed five white police officers and wounded seven others during a Black Lives Matter demonstration in Dallas. He said he wanted to kill white people, especially white cops. So you see, when people start hearing about how awful whiteness is, some will try to solve the problem. And white people must be the only folks on earth who put up with being told that they deserve to be abolished. This is a suicidal mentality. As Vilfredo Pareto, the Italian economist and philosopher put it, whoever becomes a lamb will find a wolf to eat him. Well, we refuse to become lambs. We have the right to be us, and only we can be us. We have a destiny that we can make as glorious as our heritage. It's up to us. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also visit our website at amren.com.